Um, my name is Shanna. I'm a recovering heroin addict. I am 26 years old and I've been clean for almost three years. In high school I drank a lot. I always knew that I was one of the ones that just drank a little too much and when I was drinking I didn't have to have an excuse for what I was doing. Slowly I started smoking marijuana. I never really thought I had a problem and I had met an ex-boyfriend who was a heroin addict and um, we started selling opiates together and I happened to try it and I fell in love the first pill I took. He had been doing heroin all along I just wasn't aware of it and then um, once I started doing the opiates, he introduced me to the heroin because it was cheaper and easier to get. And the first time I went into treatment, I, um, I was willing to go and I, and I went and um, I just, I had a really hard time while I was there. You know, I didn't know how my life had become the way that it had become. And now I'm sitting in a rehab and, you know, I don't belong here. I had such a great family and I came from you know, being so loved and I would hear stories about people that were abused or that didn't have parents or, you know, just stories where I disqualified myself because I did come from this loving family that cared about me so much and yet I was still sitting in the same seats as these people were. I definitely was in denial, yeah. I had gotten introduced to um, Narcotics Anonymous meetings. If I didn't think that alcohol or marijuana was a problem. I thought that as long as I stayed away from the pills, then I would be okay, and that's what I did. I got out of treatment. Um, I drank and I smoked, you know, occasionally, but I would still go to these meetings, and I still, for some reason, was like, I don't have a problem the way that they do. I could still do these things, um, and that lasted for a, for a little while. I met another guy, and he happened to be a heroin addict as well. He was in recovery. We relapsed together. Um, for me, I think that relapse happened because I really wasn't completely ready to surrender to the fact that I was an addict and I wasn't able to drink and I wasn't able to, to do things that everyone around me was able to do. And um, I really had to come to the realization that this was how my life has to be now and I'm not a normal kid at that point. As much as I was surrounded by people that loved me and cared about me, I, I did feel alone. I felt um, like no one understood me. And I knew I wasn't happy with, with who I was, and I really didn't know why. Unfortunately, I did a lot of damage to my family before I really realized that I can't live like this anymore. I, um, I had stolen everything from my parents, um, down to my mother's engagement ring. Um, I just, I was a shell of myself walking around my house. I have three younger sisters that I think were more terrified that I was going to die than anything else. And I would just come home and it was like nothing else mattered besides how I was going to get high. You know, my mom wasn't able to leave her pocketbook around. You know, they had to watch everything that I did. Um, and you know, the, the last time um, I had stolen pills from someone's house that my sister babysits for, I had stolen things from my grandparents, I, you know, really went, you know, as low as I could possibly get for me. And um, I was with that boyfriend and we decided to rob somebody. And um, we succeeded, but then eventually got arrested. And that's really when I was sitting in a jail cell. Um, realized, you know, what am I doing? You know, now, now I'm in jail. You know, I'm not in rehab anymore, I'm in jail. Um, unfortunately, while I was in that jail cell, my boyfriend, who I got gotten arrested with, committed suicide in the jail cell. I was just detoxing um, from heroin. I'm sitting in a jail cell wondering how I got there, and they had called me down and told me that now he was dead. I still can, like, remember so clearly sitting across from and the plastic being in the way and um, just hysterical crying, just wanting my dad to hold me, just wanting my dad to hug me, you know, and the pain I felt for doing the things that I did and the pain that he felt was just like unimaginable. After all of that pain that I had, that I had caused them, I still couldn't stop because I wasn't willing to surrender. I just, 
I was stuck in feeling so miserable for myself and um, I continued to use and um, my dad had approached me once again and he said to me, Shanna, you know, you gotta, you, ha you have to go away and you gotta go away for a long time. I had to like look inside myself and know that I was better than this. I was better than this disease. I didn't deserve to be letting this disease control my life and if I didn't go through the pain, I probably wouldn't have I probably wouldn't have ever gotten to that point. And I got dropped off at Nassau Medical Center Detox and I ended up transferring to Daytop, which is an all-women's program, and I stayed there for uh, six months and um, decided that when I got out that I was going to go to a sober house and I did that and um, from there I went back to college and I just slowly started to regain my life back. Um, I'll never forget being in treatment and um, this is when I was in long term and I got a letter from my sister saying that she wanted her sister back. I still like it. I'm an older sister to three girls that should be looking up to me and all I'm doing is, you know, disappointing them. That's all I was doing. The amount of letters that I got from my sisters while I was in treatment was, you know, constant constant, which is what really kept me going. Every day I would wake up, I'd say, oh, I want to get the hell out of here, you know, I don't want to stay here, I, I got to go, but those letters really um, saved my life. I come from that all-American family where if you guys came to my house, you would say, oh, they're a picture-perfect little happy family. I want people to know that it doesn't matter that I came from that, because I was sitting in a jail cell with people that had murdered people, you know. <laughs> No matter if you come from a, a good family, a bad family, abuse, you know, whatever, whatever your history is, it doesn't matter because addiction doesn't discriminate.